All right, guys, welcome to your 16th MySQL tutorial. And in this lesson, I want to talk to you guys about creating custom columns. Now, creating custom columns, wow, that's kind of like a tongue twister. Creating custom columns is something that you can do, and it's going to come in handy a whole lot. For example, say that you were working with your customers table and your boss wanted to send out a letter to all your customers. So, of course, in order to address a letter, at least in the United States, you write the name, the address, and under that you write the city and state. But in order to write the city and state, you typically write it like this. Instead of writing, writing the city and state like that, you write the city with a comma and then the state after it. However, if we go ahead and we look at our customers table, there's no way that we can achieve this because the city and state are two different things and the comma doesn't come after the city name. So your boss comes in and he's like, Bucky, I need a column that has city comma state. And we're like, okay, well these are the only columns we have to work with. What do you want us to do? Lucky for you, you have been watching my tutorials and you know that there is a way that you can temporarily make your own custom columns. So let me go ahead and use a select statement, but instead of selecting city and state, I'm going to teach you guys about a simple function. Now, I'll go more I'll go on more about functions later on. But for now, go ahead and type C O N C A T. This is short for concatenate and it's basically a job that MySQL can do that it takes a list of items and it combines those items. Now the first item we want to combine is city. Now of course whenever you're using a list just separate it with commas. Now the second item we want to combine is just a string of text. We want to include a comma because remember and this isn't MySQL this is just an example Adams comma and why would be an example of where I live. So in between the city and state, I want a comma and a space. So anytime you are just including raw text, go ahead and put it in between single quotation marks. So a comma and space is the next thing I want. And then the last thing in my list, of course, I need a comma to separate my list, is the state. So again, city, comma and space, state. Now those three things need to be separated with a comma. So now that I'm going to go ahead and select that column, and again this is a column that I'm going to make up from customers, I can go ahead and run this and check it out. I now created a new custom column that is made up of the city name with a comma and a space after it and then the state. So Adams is a city. Did I say steady? What the heck is steady? Adams, comma space, New York. Gary, comma space, Indiana, I think that is. Phoenix, comma space, Arizona. So that is how you can use the concat to pretty much, like I said, concat is short for concatenate, which means join things together. So it takes a bunch of items as a list and it joins them together. You can either join together two columns that already exist or whenever you want to use text like maybe a comma or maybe you want to use a hyphen or a plus sign you need to include that in between single quotation marks now you're saying okay well I know PHP or some other program already or maybe Java and in order to reference this column it needs to have a name so what is the name of this column is it city no is it state no, is it concat city comma state comma whatever? No. In order to give this new column a name, because check it out, whenever you make a table, every column has a name. In order to name your new column, you need to specify that whenever you're writing your query. So here's the query we had before. Select this column, the custom column we made up from customers. However, it doesn't have a name yet, so in order to name it, go ahead and say select that as and after the word as you give it a name such as new underscore address now whenever you select this column it's gonna have the name new address so select my custom column as the name new address now I just go ahead and I messed that up so let me go ahead and run this and check it out 
now we have our custom column formatted exactly how we wanted it to be formatted and it now has the name new address so now whenever we are working with a program like PHP that needs to know the name of this it knows whenever it uses the name new address to use this information it's pretty much like a nickname that you can give to your column so whenever you're programming you can refer to it now the last thing I want to teach you guys about whenever using custom columns is how to use mathematical operations so say for example you were having I don't know like say we had this website and this was like eBay and you were having a sale of all your items where you were selling them for a dollar off so instead of 204 this would be 104 and instead of 149.99 this would be 148.99 well in order to you know if we don't want to ruin this column already let's just go ahead and make an additional custom column with the new price so let's go ahead hop over to where we can type in our queries and let me show you it beforehand first select the name and the cost from items now what this does is it goes ahead and gives us the name of the item and the cost of the item so now let's go ahead and add an additional custom column on here and we will call it sale price or something so we want to select the name and cost just like before but now we want to go ahead and select cost minus one now what this is going to do is it's going to create a new column that basically takes the price or the cost of the item and subtracts one from it so our first column is going to be 148.99 the second one's going to be 104 the third one's going to be 1399 so on and so forth However, just like before, this third column is a custom column, therefore it doesn't have a name yet. So in order to name it, we need to use as, and then we give it a name like sale price or something clever like that. So now it creates a third custom column whenever we run this query, and it treats it, it gives it the nickname sale price. So whenever we were to code this with our, you know, whenever we were programming our new and improved eBay, we can use the sale price column and we still retain our important information. Now a couple things you may want to take note of. Computers have a weird way whenever they perform math on well just whenever they perform math because they don't perform math like a human and they make these little rounding errors and I'll talk about more on that later on but we're gonna learn how to format this properly for example drop all these unneeded decimal points and I'll explain to you guys why computers can't perform math in the way that mean you can later on but for now that isn't the you know that's not I don't want to get into all that right now I just want to go ahead and talk about custom columns and how to nickname your custom columns so the last thing I want to talk about is you know how I used minus as a simple mathematical operation you can also use plus and whenever you want to multiply you use the asterisk the symbol above the 8 and that means multiply it by 1 and divide is the forward slash so again plus minus asterisk for multiply and forward slash for divide so you know don't look for like a division key on your keyboard or something because it doesn't exist but anyways I bet your brains are jam-packed full of information so please go take a break go do something else go watch some TV or something and when you're ready to finally come back to these tutorials because I know it's a lot then you're welcome back so anyways thank you guys for watching don't forget to subscribe don't forget to add me on Google Plus and I will see you guys in the next video